Welcome back. And the third hour on Thursdays is uh, Tim Alexander, Lord Stirling's Hour. Tim, tell us the top stories that you're dealing with now. Well, um, Moody's has, uh, uh, its hammer has fallen um, on several of the big banks. Uh, they've been downgraded uh, by the Moody's uh, the ranking system, rating system. Yeah, Fitch uh, was last week, wasn't it? Uh, I think Fitch downrated uh, uh, yeah, but this Spain happened by... Just, this happened uh, just about an hour ago. Right, so and, this is a, uh, another... Uh, basically, the the debt of City, uh, J.P. Uh, Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, uh, Bank of America. So in other words, U.S. Uh, banks are now being downgraded. Banks. So these are basically U.S.-based banks are being downgraded now after well, European. Well, nine European was, banks are also expected to be uh, right. Barclays, uh, Union Bank of uh, uh, Switzerland, uh, the Royal Bank of Scotland, Lloyd's. Uh, you know. So all the big so, ones. So in and, other words, it's a prelude to a, to a full European collapse. What I've heard, and it was out in Steve Quayle's website, and I think Steve may sometimes jumps a little bit on the gun, but I think he's actually got good information here. Is I that think the he's Euros, going on the air tonight with some, some big yeah, stuff. Yeah, what I, I think he's actually on the right trap path here is that uh, Europe is the Europe, Euro is dead, but they just won't declare the body cold yet until maybe six months. And what's really going on behind the scenes is they're trying to rebuild a whole new world financial system, which I believe out of this ashes of this, which is going to be integrated. It is tough right now because Obama can't come out and say what he actually is doing behind the scenes and how many trillions of dollars he's printing or guaranteeing the European Central Bank or a G20 that they're talking about because they had a recent G20 conference. And they have another one at the end of the month in Europe. I think that they're moving very quickly to what I call the G20 world market of the beast system, where you have a... FDIC for European banks and for world banks, like all these big banks in America, and they're going to create quadrillions of dollars or more debt while they devalue the currencies, which means we're facing somewhere down the road, it could be this fall, it could be next year, a bank holiday where they devalue the currencies. I think it's coming. Well, it's not just the devaluation of the currency. It's the fact that there could be uh, a fair amount of inflation Oh yeah, and when you have, uh, well, what is it? Around 50 million people on food stamps, and they're not actually stamps anymore; they're a card. Right. Uh, and if they don't keep scale with the rise of inflation in food items, you're going to have people that uh, won't be able to eat, won't get enough food to eat. And the uh, soup kitchens and the places that will give you food uh, for you and your family, they're stretched right now because the food stamp program is not really all that good uh, anyway. And uh, so what happens with, you know, what happens when, uh, if you're a young uh, family, a mother, or father, or what other, and you can't feed your kids, you know? Right. What do you do? Uh, what happens if you can't feed yourself? Um, you know, there have been a lot of Greeks that have uh, committed suicide over that very thing. But uh, I tell you what, I think if the Greeks were Americans, there'd be a lot of them saying, well, where, where does this member of parliament live? Or where does this banker live? Or why don't, if I'm going to go, why don't I just take a few of the Henri Sonsos with me? Well, the problem and is, is I, there's more than just a, a banker. I want to go right back to the root of it, and I've mentioned it before in the show, and I want to get your response because you're a professor. You teach this in history and, and the arts. Walter Burian really got out to what I call the, the primary tumor, which is the comprehensive annual financial review. And he said, look, the Fed doesn't need to be audited. We know what the Fed is doing. We just need to take it over. But it's because the municipalities, the towns, the cities, the pension funds, the big insurance companies, they're invested in globalism. The politicians and the bankers and the other people and the transnational U.S. and, and British and other corporations, they're just following the money. Most of the marketplace, including the stock market, the derivatives market, everything, is institutional. It's cities, municipalities, it's Caltrans here in California, the California uh, Teachers Union, etc. It's all these different pension funds and insurance companies. Well, that's right, that, but let me, let me explain how it works. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. Fourteen, fifteen years ago, I was setting up what was to have been the fourth nightly broadcast television uh, news service, compete with the evening half-hour newscast of ABC, NBC, CBS. Right. And we had 
uh, we had worked out uh, preliminary carriage agreements all over the continental United States, the lower 48. I had 175 million in venture capital uh, from one of the big New York firms. And I had dealt with a lot, probably the majority of the, the venture capital firms uh, in New York City and some in Boston. Um, well, my wife was diagnosed with terminal ovarian cancer, so I canceled everything at the last minute and took care of her. But anyway, uh, at that time, and that was kind of the dot-com phase, and the uh, investment bankers were telling people, now they weren't telling me this because I wasn't a manufacturer uh, and we were going to already have people overseas anyway, but they were telling people that, uh, okay, uh, if you've got a, a really good business plan here and we can, you know, we can flip this, we can do this and that, and we can all make money. But one thing you've got to provide us with is a outsourcing uh, for the jobs uh, six months or a year or a year and a half down the road. So they were telling new startups, uh, this is great, we'll come up with the money, we'll all make money, uh, but you have to have a plan to ship most of the jobs to the third world. So what I'm saying is this, it didn't just happen, it was orchestrated, and it was orchestrated by the usual suspects, and, and yeah, that's exactly. the people with the big money, the really big money, the, in the trillions of dollars, the global banking cartel. Right. And they're the same people that are orchestrating the, the depression, the global depression we're in, and the, the Eurozone crisis. They created, the Rothschilds created the European Union, and they were the ones that structured it the way it is. So yes, there's a European Parliament, but they don't make most of the rules. Most of the rules are made by anonymous bureaucrats, and there's not really much the average citizen in Europe can do about the rules, et cetera, et cetera. But, and they created the Eurozone, the, the, the common currency. Now they're taking it down, just like their parents created and grandparents created communism it was the global bankers that financed lenin and trotsky why well because you, you got to have wars you got to have world wars and code wars and so forth because that's the greatest generator of of deficit spending and deficit spending to the global bankers is profit plus they're satanists and there's nothing more evil than war. There's nothing more that Satan wants to see than, than a giant blood orgy, which is what we call war. And uh, so, you know, uh, there was uh, multiple benefits to them to create war type situations. But these are the people that have created this. And, and we can all panic. Oh, Europe's going to fall down. Okay. This is, this is planned. I mean, they oh, yeah. put a lot of money and effort into creating this. That's why I say I, I agree with you. I think what we have is an outbreak not only of war, but outbreak of peace, false peace that's going to set up the peace treaty to divide Israel. Also an outbreak not of a world global collapse like the typical 1929, but the outbreak of the mark of the beast. That's what I see coming. Well, they, yeah, because you see, they want a one world currency. And to get to there, and that's the linchpin to a one world government. Right. And and the, the way they think is they think of, uh, you know, Meyer Rothschild, who is really, his original name is Meyer, um, oh, starts with a B, uh, Bryn, uh, Bauer. Bauer. Meyer, Bauer. Meyer, Meyer Bauer, yeah. And he said, I don't care who sits on the thrones of Europe. I just care about who runs, who, who controls their finances, who controls their money supply. Right. And that's the key, you see. And that's why it doesn't matter whether you have a Democrat or Republican in. One spins things one way, the other spins things the other way. But at the bottom, uh, of, at the end of the day, deficit spending goes through the ceiling and the global banksters make more money. Exactly. And, of course, all of your property is gone and you're now a slave. And well, they're going to take the money from somebody, and that's us. Exactly. Remarkable analysis back in a moment with Tim Alexander. We'll be able to moment, too. Welcome back, and uh, on 
the break, he had a very interesting comment. I uh, just want to open up with a story. Mitt Romney offers immigration proposals and speech before Latino Group. This was just a few hours ago. And he said, uh, and this is quoting Romney, we can find common ground here, and we must, Romney said before a gathering at Walt Disney World by National Association of Latino Elected and Appointed Officials. In quotes, we owe it to ourselves as Americans to ensure that our country remains a land of opportunity both for those who were born here and those who share our values, respect our laws, and want to come to our shores. And, of course, uh, you can read the whole article. I have it posted up there. Uh, basically, down here, a little further, he's making a statement. Some people have asked if I will stand, let stand the president's executive action, Romney said. The answer is that I will put in place my own long-term solution to replace and supersede the president's temporary measure. Uh, you know, so obviously... It's, it looks like Romney's going to probably have Rubio uh, as his vice presidential candidate, a former Cuban, born in Cuba, and it's very likely that they're going to have some kind of policy that uh, is going to try to steal the thunder from Obama, who's trying to curry to the uh, the uh, current Latino population that are illegally here. Uh, I have a solution that I proposed with uh, Tom Hoffling that I think is more rational than the ones that I've heard so far, because what I see happening is playing just politics to this issue rather than dealing with this this very difficult problem. It's not just uh, to quote you know, is is also cruel to human beings, but also is just plain stupid because it opens the door. Not only our biggest immigration to America now is not Mexicans at the moment; it's actually Asians coming from Asia, and a lot of them are students that come here and don't go back home. They just come here to go to this, uh, to file the to, uh, students here, and they don't leave. People don't know that. Well, uh, uh, go into any Chinese restaurant, and uh, you'll probably be waited on by someone whose uh, English is not very good. They're not second or third generation Chinese Americans. Uh, they're uh, immigrants or illegal immigrants or somebody here that uh, got here legally and has uh, overextended their, their visa. Right, and the fact is that, that neither of these parties are dealing with the issue properly. I agree with Tom Hoffman. We need to control our borders. How do you spell his last name? H-O-E-F-L-I-N-G. His website, TomHoffling.com. He's a pro-life, the only pro-life, totally constitutional American candidate. H-O-E-F-L-I-N-G? H-O-E-F-L-I-N-G? Yeah, because Tom that Hoffling. was my mother's uh, uh, main name. Tom Hoffling. Hafling is how we pronounce it. Hafling, yeah. H-O-E-F-L-I-N-G. Hoffling.com. Yeah, well, that's interesting. He may be a relative. There you go. Um, well, isn't that amazing? Of course, you're a genealogist, so that's that's pretty good. So yeah. uh, let me let me just read a little further. If you have an advanced degree here, we want you to stay here, so we will st uh, staple a green card to your diploma. Romney said, we want the best and brightest to enrich our nation through the jobs okay, and technologies. Okay, but you know what? Uh, pardon me. I, I, the, I teach, and I see these kids getting these degrees that they owe so much money for and they can't get any jobs or if they get a job it's uh, at Wally World for 10 bucks an hour if they're lucky maybe it's seven dollars an hour I mean I've had my students tell me I said can you go out if you try really hard do you think you get a ten dollar an hour job and most say no uh, we'll be lucky to get 750 or eight and, uh, and and we're not talking full-time jobs either most of the time. So, you know, by the way, uh, that's not enough money to move away from here. New college no. graduates coming here. We need jobs for the ones we've got, like our Americans. We need to take care of America. Yeah, well that starts with what I mentioned in the first segments and in the first hour, we need to have a uh, a law in place that doesn't allow our insurance companies, our uh, municipalities, cities, states, etc., to invest in globalism. And then secondly, we need to put the, the Glass-Steagall up so we don't allow speculation by global bankers to steal from us by sitting up speculating accounts and then want us to pay their bad debts. I agree with you 100%, but at this point in time, there almost is a revolution to, to achieve that because these ornery, evil so-and-sos have a death lock on this country, on oh, yeah, Congress, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and our entire financial system, what? and they intend to take us down. And they intend to, to break the back of America because Americans are just a little bit too untrustworthy. We're just well, a little bit too independent. It's, not, it's a little different than that, uh, uh, Tim. I think they're going to break the back, but they're going to break the back of the middle class. What they're going to use is America as a weapon to break the back of the rest of the world by the debt ability. Our ability uh, with the Federal Reserve to generate debt is greater than any other nation on earth. And as a result, we can create enough debt to bail out uh, Europe to uh, literally promote abortion all around the world, to promote military expansion around the world. 
and to build a giant military that's now so much larger. Our Navy is larger than the next 26 nations' total, total naval ship weight of all the next 26 nations on Earth. I mean, that's ridiculous. Um, and well, the reason for it, dollars at work. Wire tax dollars at work. And again, you have to create a new boogeyman. There's so-called terrorists, some ter- guys with turbans on, sitting in a cave in Afghanistan. Or these other They're terrorists. Working miracles in, uh, uh, right. and, on 911. Right, or the idea that we have to take off our shoes, we can't have gels, we can't drink fluids on the plane. I mean, how ridiculous. And they, any chemist will tell you it's impossible to make the kind of bomb that they said that would do anything inside an aircraft. It's, it's uh, not about public safety. It's about tyranny and, and conditioning the sheeple to line up and accept whatever the government dictates. It's, it's about conditioning the American people to be total sheeple, to lose their, their, their courage and their guts that their ancestors had that, that farmed this country, and line up and let us probe you, uh, and then go through our dangerous backscatter x-ray machine, which will accomplish nothing in terms of security, but just might mess up your DNA. By the way, when I went up through the uh, security going up to San Diego, because San Diego is bad, and uh, the first guy I talked to, I said, well, I'm opting out my family is, and, and uh, my wife and my daughter. And they said, well, you're opting out? I said, oh, my gosh. They said, oh, my gosh. I no. said, yeah, we're opting out. It means that I said, y- you can walk me through the metal detector, and you can uh, do a pat down uh, and uh, just get to it. They said, oh, I don't know how long that will take. I said, we got to get a flight. So about 30 seconds later, my wife, Michelle, popped up, and she said, we're going to get to our flight. Get a damn supervisor here right now. So all of the scurrying around, I was like, you could tell. Like, it was like all of a sudden there was a wolf in the chicken yard, right? And, <laughs> and, and, I, and I was saying it loud. Of course, you know my voice. I don't need a, I don't need a PA system when I do a speak, speaking engagement. I just say, turn it off. I don't need it. Uh, so you can tell in the entire area, everybody's kind of stopped. You know, they're not breathing because people were walking through the back scanner x-ray device, which, by the way, the terahertz waves are in the same frequency waves as the death ray machines that are used in these so-called active denial systems that can hit you at a few hundred yards and make your skin feel like it's on fire. Hey, by the way, before I forget, you know how to stop them? Uh, the copier, the stuff that goes in photocopiers, yeah. uh, you throw that up in the air and it, it defeats... Uh, yeah, the chaff. You're talking about the photocopier chaff. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it you know, scatters it. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, uh, the, the powder you use to make it because it's got uh, magnetite in it. Yeah, exactly. That's an interesting idea. The type of little powder that's in there. And, and like the, the the sonic weapons they they now have, uh, you put a balloon up or something and and you pop it and over an area, and uh, basically it defeats their systems. A balloon full of this magnetite, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, we got our pat down. Uh, they were trying to act super apologetic because they figured, well, we, somebody's recording all this, right? Uh, and, uh, and being super officious, right? And, of course, we were saying, I was saying, I'm an environmental doctor. These cause damage, DNA damage. And you can tell everybody else was a little freaked out of the uh, station there. It's like, all of a sudden, oh, my gosh, we have a sheepdog in our- Welcome back, and our nuclear expert joins us, uh, Chris Harris. I just want to repeat um, what the proposal was to Senator Wyden, and I'll be back in contact with him right after the show today and his assistant. Uh, my proposal was that you have, say, 100 aircraft with a, uh, say, a, a uh, uh, recording device to record in millisieverts per hour and counts per minute and with the GPS coordinates, which you can have on a cell phone, a GPS coordinates and uh, their altitude, so you could actually map out in real time exactly what the radiation levels were, because you don't, you don't know what the background is. The radiation from Fukushima now 1.25 years after it, one and a quarter in a in a third of the years after Fukushima, we know that radiation has circulated the planet many times. So it was a background level, and what we need to do is, for example, let's say that we had flights uh, this week from Portland uh, to San Diego or, say, from uh, Chicago to uh, Los Angeles. And we found out that, you know, in, all, in most of the flights, we've had a certain curve of radiation. You know, you get to a certain altitude, and you're going to have a certain amount of background radiation. If you go to the NOAA website, they give you a range for certain altitudes at certain latitudes. If you go to a latitude of 35 degrees or whatever. And <clears throat> if you have those curves, you can have real time. You can say, oh, my gosh, look, there's a blip. 
where all of a sudden we saw on Wednesday on the afternoon flight from Chicago to L.A., there was like two and a half times the amount of radiation measured only over a certain part of the flight path. You could then create a graph and say at 15 to 20,000 feet there was a radiation plume that was heading in a specific direction. You could drive, develop maps. You could actually figure out, work out velocities of, I call plume velocity maps and distribution maps where you can actually create a graph of that. And why is this important? It's important for civil defense. It's important to know if it's going to land in rain over crops, if it's going to descend to lower altitudes, if it's going to go not only over North America, but continue on going to Europe and all the way around, or if it's going to be transpolar. If there's flights between here and, and Alaska, and they see a plume not heading toward Canada, the U.S.-Canada border, but heading over the poles, the shortest distance is to go transpolar directly to Europe or Russia or Asia, to China. And what we need is data, and we're not getting data, so we have no idea. And it's, there's a, the RAD network, and I tell people, if you want to get a radiation detector, get them from us. If you want to support us through less CMF, go to the Nutramedical website, and I'm going to put up another link so you can find it easier because it's a difficult website to, to maneuver around, but look for the, for the Inspector EXP. It has special little arm link to it. It also has a link for USB so you can actually record things. But um, what do you think of that proposal, Chris? Does that, does that make any sense? We need data. We don't have a damn thing. There are a few people collecting a little data, like uh, uh, Michael Collins in uh, Santa Monica and a few other people with a RAD network or a radiation alert uh, network. But this is uh, very sparse. It's not run by the government. The government's not sharing information with us properly at all. They're not testing fish, not testing waters, and not testing the black or the uh, Kiroshi uh, current that comes from Japan. Uh, we're getting absolutely zip all from the government and the FDA and the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and uh, it just ticks me off that we're not having data. And it would be that simple: a hundred detectors running on flights every day that would, would give us actual data, and nobody needs to touch it. The airline stewards don't need to freak out; they can continue making coffee and smiling and being personable. Little radiation detectors just going along. Don't need to turn on the audio to freak people out that it's 1,400 counts per minute now or 5,000 counts per minute. Just let the sucker record it and send it to ground by Wi-Fi network, because all these planes now have Wi-Fi. And in real time, you could have someone sitting there on the screen with a computer going, oh, my gosh, look at that. There's a big plume we've calculated that's hitting northern California and heading on its way to the Midwest, and it looks like it's ducking down and going to head toward Alabama or northern Florida. Well, you need to have civil defense. If that's a big radiation plume, and we talked about this before, we have a paper up. You gave it last, I think, a little over a week ago uh, from April. And I want you to, to explain that paper again, that if there's only 10% of the radiation released from the cooling pool, 14, 1,545 cooling pool fuel rod assemblies, just 10%, the radiation release will be 80 to 300 times more than what was released after the Sendai earthquake and the Fukushima meltdown. 80 to 300. And if 100% pops their corks, we could be dealing with a radiation burst, and uh, that, that could be 3,000 times that. And we're talking about radiation sores, radiation sickness, uh, serious immediate health problems, and depressed immune systems, so literally down, you know, in other words, downwind, we could end up with immune system failure, massive plagues, people finding that they're bleeding from their gums and getting skin rashes and, and, and radiation burns and hair falling out, all kinds of horrifying stuff that we're seeing in Japan, but the media there in Japan are suppressing it, just like uh, uh, Kamiyui, I think, I don't know how to pronounce her name right, she actually had a website, and we talked about this on Rents when I was on a guest the last few Tuesdays, that w was taken down and shows pictures of her with all her teeth falling out and with radiation burns on her arms. Well, that can come to America if we don't have civil defense, and also our crops. If, uh, if a plume comes over our areas of a specific crops, we want to be able to cover those. We want to remediate and filter that water. We want to pull out the radioisotopes so our soil doesn't get bioaccumulated with a massive surge of radiation. Because if it stays at 30,000 feet or 20,000 feet and doesn't fall, well, you're cool. It's going to go all the way to Yugoslavia. But people don't realize that if we don't have data, we have no idea what the hell's happening because you can't but, see but it. But, Dr. It's Bill, if we it. know all this stuff, then it would interfere with us watching stuff like Dancing with the Stars and the latest reality shows. Aren't well, we, we, can, we can have a new show. Stupid. Why don't we have a show called Dancing with the Isotopes? Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Anyway, a little bit of uh, dry humor oh. here. So, uh, Chris, tell us uh, what you're the nuclear expert. Tell us what you think of that idea. And, well, you know, I'm going to try to come back I, I with, like the, the, idea. with the I, I think, yeah. I think if you're getting usable data, and just like what Tim was alluding to, do they really want you to know, and what are you going to do about it if you know? 
So it's probably better in their, in their feelings. It's probably better that you don't know which what well, they're doing well, right we, now. But and somebody know, should know. If it's not us, it should be FEMA. And then FEMA should have an action point so they don't keep people completely freaked out. So it frees society. But FEMA should know, or a government department, or somebody should know, like civil defense, like the sheriff's offices. Somebody should have access, like medical doctors, fire police. So they should know. Oh my gosh, there's a radiation plume coming to say Los Angeles. You guys better damn well be prepared. But we don't have data. We have no idea what the, the heck's happening. The real first responders of the people. Right. The first responders should have access to this, even if it's not the public. And then when it gets to the level where, yes, the public needs to know because there's an earthquake coming. Let's say we had an earthquake warning system. We would know, let's say, two hours before an earthquake was going to hit. Well, people would be able to start doing duck and cover and get off freeways and off over ramps and things like that. Well, we have got plenty of ways of knowing that there's a radiation plume across well, 5,000. Actually, uh, Dr. Bill, the U.S. Air Force has some dedicated aircraft. Now, are they being used? My guess is yes. Uh, is that data going down the line? No, it's, it's being kept at the top. Well, that's, right, and that's why I'm trying to force the issue because I know, people. I know that it, that's a fact. In fact, we have three ways of picking up this radiation. We have radiation balloons that can actually have a radiation detector on a balloon, which can easily be put up like a weather balloon. We have satellite-based weather systems that can actually look at scintillating what's called torsion field imaging that can see radioisotopes. And this is a fact that people under have to understand. Torsion field imaging can see radioisotopes, including plumes, from space with visualized uh, classified technology. In other words, and I was told this by after my Q-level clearance, that we can see a kilo of radioisotopes up to 440 meters below ground, one kilo. And we're talking about low-level isotopes. We can see radiation plumes very easily from space, so we know that. I know that they have military jets that probably have taken it from an air nozzle and, you know, filter it, and they could actually tell you in real time what the CPM and the millisieverts per hour, and they actually know their flight path. But there's a limited number of, of military aircraft compared to the massive amount of data you could get from just civilian aircraft. Your idea is brilliant. <clears throat> the problem is the evil people running the government want to keep us in the dark. They're well, evil. From, for, well, I, I've, I've got a new dating system, and I know I'm a Christian, so I know, you know, ADBC, okay? Uh, we are now, uh, you know, uh, BF and uh, uh, AF, uh, you know, <laughs> Before Fukushima and after Fukushima. We are now 1.25 uh, AF. And Fukushima, now this is also, by the way, 2 uh, PM, which is post Makondo. And it should be called Makondo because that means the devil's milk, the devil's food, which is what the British Petroleum drilled into that salt volcanic tar dome, which they know the abiotic giant basilisk or ocean of oil under the Gulf of Mexico is sitting. By the way, that's the same batholith that was hit by the asteroid 62 million years ago that extinguished, extinguished the dinosaurs. So, uh, not good things happening, but we need data. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and Chris, uh, summarize some of the latest reports. The uh, first thing is actually, I think I'm going to rename uh, your segment that comes up on Thursday. And if you have more to say, by the way, pop in uh, tomorrow in the same hour. We're going to now change it to call TEPCO Tales. How's that? Which is fairy tales <laughs> from TEPCO and General Electric, which is, by the way, one of the czars under the Abominator. So uh, tell us the latest what's going on. Yep. They put a new 60-ton uh, cap on top of cooling pool 4, which is bad because it's going to block it in terms of putting water in there. They don't have the seal. They've moved up the time when they want to get the fuel out of there. Uh, give us all these updates as to what's going on and how... How serious is the situation in cooling pool four and reactor two, where the broken gauges are both moving in the, in the same direction, which means the fuel is getting hotter and they're, they we're getting transient criticality, which means this boiling cauldron of death is going to get a hell of a lot worse before it gets catastrophic. Well, it could be transient criticality in unit two. Of course, we're not going to know right away, but the, what we do have is uh, <clears throat> spiking of hydrogen production, and that would be from very, very high radiation uh, sources. So yeah. it would, it's possible that what you're seeing is freshly generated radioisotopes from any kind of a, any kind of a, uh, a yeah, short that, that, that hydrogen is being generated from two sources, from what's called zirconite uh, generated uh, hydrolysis, and the other is what's called neutron insertion, because when you have high-speed neutrons, you not only generate deuterium, you generate free hydrogen too, right? 
Yeah, well, yeah, and the water actually cracks into a, into a hydrogen. It's radioactive. Right, you, you catalyze it by a neutron a insertion. Yeah, and the gamma rays will do it too, yeah. Yeah, and so and that, that's probably what we're seeing, you know, and uh, so that's, that's unit two. And, of course, and it also means one other thing, too, in my opinion, I guess I'm going to say that, my opinion, that all the water that they said is in unit two really isn't in unit two because uh, if you're getting a little bit of, well, I know it's a lot of radiation, but still, if you're, if you're making that much hydrogen, it means that, that there's not a whole lot of water. You you're know, talking about the reactor, right, not the, the number two out. cooling pool. Correct. I'm, I'm back to the reactor. So it's, it's hard to okay. keep them all separated all because there's so many different uh, events going on at the same time. Uh, none of which needs, are good, by the way. <laughs> No, none of them are good. And uh, shifting over to Unit 4, we did discuss that uh, there are some, several vulnerabilities, and my opinion was the, uh, the uh, refueling cavity seal was very vulnerable right now. And uh, instead of TEPCO has responded just this week, uh, so within, within the last couple of days, that instead of waiting until 2015 to remove the undamaged fuel from Unit 4, which implicates that there's plenty of damaged fuel there, too, if they can't even touch uh, they're going to try to do it this year. Now, don't ask me how, because that, that's an engineering feat in, uh, in itself, because uh, you, you've got to keep it submerged. But it, they're going to step up their efforts. And by, and by the way, the, the Japanese are going to increase it and put back on the power on the OI, that's OI, reactor mm -hmm. number three and four. The reactors are within weeks going to go back on. Uh, and uh, they're, up. Yeah, and they've already restarted up. And reactor four, so, so that, that this, this is really, really bad news. And uh, these, by the way, are sitting on very unstable fault lines. They've already shown that they moved significantly during the last earthquake and we're, we have a virtual guarantee that earthquakes under Ue, as well as the, Dai, the, the uh, not only the Daiichi, but the Daini reactor sites are also in danger. And other reactor sites all over, not just northern Japan, but other places in Japan, are in danger of major loss of containment or backup power. Well, this, this report... That TEPCO put out part of their fairy tales. I guess you want to call Tepco it that tales. way, but uh, it does it does talk about uh, how uh, um, let's see, uh, you, uh, the Daini was was kind of saved because of because of the elevation of it, and the Daiichi, of course, was not spared, and it was flooded. And they're showing some some pretty yeah. Here, here's the latest report, just one hour ago. Typhoon Gushal, that's G U C H O L. Headed for Fukushima. This is one day ago. <clears throat> that was bearing down in Fukushima, and uh, a magnitude 6.4 quake um, also struck off uh, 75 miles closer to the crippled reactor number four as well. A 6.4 also struck. Yes. Sir. Yes, that's correct. Yes, there was another <clears throat> another one too. And so Fukushima area has been hit with both a fairly sizable earthquake and a super typhoon. Well, the super typhoon isn't finished yet. It's going to carry whatever debris it has, either dump it in the ocean or carry it all the way to us. So well, that's why if we, with uh, Senator Wyden, we needed to have that data after March last year, and we would have baseline data. We'd have data to say this is a transient surge happening right now in real time. We've got nothing. You could be well, walking outside you, and the birds well, are chirping. Even if you don't have baseline data <clears throat> from that, you you know when when the readings get dangerous. Right, exactly. High. So. If you if you have let's say let's say you have ten flights a day from San Diego to uh, to say Seattle Washington and each one of those carries a radiation detector each one has a specific flight path you can create a pretty uh, accurate pretty uh, good analysis if you have these north south east west flights to determine exactly what's happening at different altitudes and also get a pretty good idea of, of the cohesiveness of these plumes uh, and that's what we need we need to know there's background radiation that circulated the planet many times. Uh, but we also have what we call plumes that are relatively recent, non-dispersed levels of very highly concentrated radiation. And some of these may be really, really deadly. I mean, it may be dangerous literally to go, and you need to have HEPA filters on your home. You need to have these NIOSH masks because if the radiation level, let's say, let's say here in San Diego, my radiation count on an average good day is 22. And there's days it goes up to 58 to 60. So we know it's going two to three times background, which means we're being fukushima -ed. Yes. Right? Now, what happens if that radiation count goes up to 300 or 500? I ain't going outside. I've got HEPA filters already on my home. The windows and doors are closed, and all the water is going to be filtered because that water is also going to get in the water supply and the water tanks that are all over the place here, people's pools, their washing machines. They don't realize they're going to be washing their clothes in Fukushima. And we're not talking about just a little. We're not just talking about what we call the 
the slow water torture of, of, of you know, slow bioaccumulation. We're talking about a massive surge that if you go outside, you could really get hit with a big glomp of radiation pretty quickly. Well, yeah, and uh, some, some, some sort of a <clears throat> system, you know, that, that goes back to military NBC training, nuclear, biological, and the chemical. You know, that, so it sounds like you're putting that into practice. Well, well three, three times background. This is NBC training because I was training. It was a nuclear division of ACOM. If you get three times background radiation, it's considered a hazmat site, right? That's the rules. Three times background. That's right. Three times. So if you're walking in and the red background say 30 and all of a sudden it's 90, it's a hazmat site. And you have to figure where the hell the source is. Did somebody drop a liquid, you know, radioactive site or is there contamination here? Did something break open? What happened? Whether it's a, uh, you know, a truck carrying liquid radioactive waste or toxic, uh, you know, radioisotopes or medical waste. One of the most common people don't realize are tanker trucks carrying liquid radioactive waste from medical cyclotrons used to make radioisotopes for treating cancer. And every day, hospitals that treat cancer have cyclotrons, and they're all over the country, have medical waste in these trucks. And if one of the trucks, say, breaks down or the tank leaks, it's a hazmat site. So the state trooper has been instructed that they get hazmat training. they got to pull out your radiation detector, look at the bill of lading, see exactly the certification points, look at the barcodes, check everything, call back the hospital, what was in that tank. And then you find out, oh, my gosh, uh, they had a whole bunch of radioactive cobalt and liquid form in that tank. And, we were taught yeah. to uh, we were taught to get out your binoculars and try to read the <laughs> DOT sign <laughs> symbol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your binoculars, while you're in your rad suit, right? Your radiation suit. Or fly a drone overhead with a, uh, yeah, a yeah. camera on well, it. Well, that's yeah. actually maybe a, a po- Actually, this is another positive use of maybe these drones. They won't put these damn uh, detectors in commercial aircraft. You take, uh, Mr. Obama, why don't you take these 200,000 drones and stick those suckers up there and put little radiation detectors and Wi Fi things and connect them up so we can have real data? In real time over America, take those those fancy drones you use to try to kill people. Well, that some are going of the drones, parties. you know, have have very long flight times. Uh, one of They'd the be ones perfect. that I worked They'd be on. Perfect. So they won't put them in. We won't put them in commercial airliners. One of my other taxes, if I can't get things moving with Senator Wyden, I want to call the Airline Pilots Association and the and the uh, Stewards Association and find out. Do you realize that you might be flying? You may not have bad dry cleaning, but you may actually be flying through giant radiation plumes. In fact. Uh, that plume might be not 1,200 counts per minute. Maybe nor- maybe normal after Fukushima is 700 counts per minute, which it was for three quarters of the flight back from Portland to here. And maybe not normal is an extra 500 counts. And we're not talking about external radiation from cosmic background radiation, gamma rays and zeta particles, etc. But we call radioactive fleas that are being sucked into the air intake of the building and the jet uh, nozzles, and when they're being concentrated by the compressor inside the aircraft 8,000 feet, we're not detecting just kind of external through the, the cabin gamma rays and so on from cosmic background, but actual internal isotopes that can be bioconcentrated in your body. And yeah. those airline stewards need to know that if your hair's falling out, it may not be bad dry cleaning. It may be you got Fukushima. And it ain't going to get better. Well, we need to have data. And, uh, you know, uh, as I say, the, the, the key thing on this show is I ask people whether or not it's their belief system in the Most High God. If anybody rationally asks the right questions, reality is top secret. And if you ask the right questions and you're persistent enough, someday you're going to get security clearance. Yeah. Well, take care, everybody. Take action. Get your uh, radiation protocol set. Get yourself ready. Push your senators and congressmen to get data. We need to know now before the thing blows, as they say, like Moby Dick. We'll be doing reports on live stream after the show today. We want to get it.